All right, welcome back to another episode of Real Talk Michigan Edition. Jeff here. Dan, what's up, dude? What's happening, my man? Another day, another dollar, chasing the dream. But uh, ready to talk some Michigan football. It was another great week, moving to 9-0. 9-0 feels weird. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I like it. It's a great, weird feeling. Um. How was uh how was your watching of the game this past weekend? Um it was very interesting in the uh in the beginning or whatever when uh, when uh Rutgers had the block punt and then they busted off that one uh that one catch and run. Uh I sent I made a Snapchat I'm like, "Well, this is going to be fun." Um <laughs> but uh it, it, the Michigan ride to the ship in the end. But yeah, uh I uh, just down here in the main camp by myself and yeah, I was like, oh, boy, here we freaking go. But, yeah. <clears throat> so I was watching the game in my living room, and I fully anticipated it being what the final score was. Like, I, I just thought we would probably just molly wop them, like just wipe the floor with yeah. them. In that first half, um, they came to play. They played tough. Give them all their, all their flowers, all the credit they deserve. Um, we trailed 17 to 14 at the half. And as ugly as it was at times, it felt very Penn State, where mm. we dominate the entire game statistically, but the score doesn't reflect that. Opinions on that? What did you think about that? About the whole halftime thing? No, as far as like how we dominated in the stat sheets, but the yeah. score didn't reflect it, just like in Penn State, remember? Because obviously there was the pick right. six. And so obviously going into the half, we're like, we just kicked the shit out of this team, but yet we're losing or, or the game's too close. Opinions on that? Yeah, it just uh, d- definitely gave me some some Penn State vibes. Uh, obviously, you take away the pump block and it's fifty two ten, right? Yeah. Um, you know the, the crowd was into it. I don't know how many people were there because every time they showed the crowd, or whatever the camera was like super up close. Um, but yeah. <laughs> it it almost seemed like it was a packed house because they would zoom in on one section. Yep. Yes. Yep. But uh, but Chiano, I mean, he's a good coach. He got those boys ready to, ready to play. So in the beginning, definitely, definitely was like something where like you're not going to change the channel. But uh, yeah, uh, you know they, you know Michigan can still move. They were still moving the ball. It was really just Rutgers making a few plays and the uh, even a couple missed field goals from Moody were uncharacteristic like. So you're just sitting there going like what the hell is going on right here it's kind of a weird game in the first half to be honest but yeah outside i mean yeah uh first half and this whole adversity-esque type of deal here it was definitely um well I, i'm not gonna go to the bathroom yet because i don't know what's gonna happen yeah but the one thing that you can kind of uh count on with michigan this year especially in these last four games is taking care of business in the second half and you know it's it's funny because like I listen to these player interviews and, you know, it's very commonly, well, what did you guys talk about at halftime? It's not a whole lot of talking going on at the, at the second half. Like they kind of understand where they need to be. It's more or less buckling down and, 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 and fixing those mistakes. And all of a sudden they come out and blow the doors off them. Um, They scored zero in the second half and, and we scored 38 points. So, 52-17 Fifty-two seventeen is the final. There's a lot of different things that happen in that second half. Uh, three picks, one return for six, but you know, fourteen total rushing yards on the entire game for for Rutgers. Michigan just was like bigger, more physical, kind of were able to do whatever they wanted. Again, they rushed for fifty three fifty three carries for two eighty two and four touchdowns. This this ground game is without a doubt the best country i mean there's nobody that can bring a just even hold a candle to this ground game it's uh it's next level great the sacks are are pouring in still we're still getting that pressure that we want to get um this team just feels good i mean i i i never lost hope even down 17 14 i thought to myself we're still going to kick this team's ass like i literally thought that to myself coming out of the second half and then obviously as the game's over i'm like yeah it seems about right Mm -hmm. um I know you had a parlay on the game. J.J. McCarthy continues to struggle hitting deep passes. He missed Angel Anthony on a wide open one. Uh, what were your reactions on 
obviously you're missing the parlay there, but what were your reactions on the, the overthrow to Andrew Anthony? Yeah, it just reminded me of uh, Jake Rudock versus Utah in uh, 2015, just a lot, just slightly off. I mean, if JJ hits Andrew Anthony in that, on that play, I mean, that's a shoe and touchdown. Um, so obviously, uh, you know, I, you know, maybe this is not being able to, um, you know, get his timing right if, because in the beginning, of the, you know, in the beginning of the season, there was uh, obviously a quarterback battle, and there was a lot of running going on. So you know, could attest to that maybe, but he's definitely been off on the deep stuff. You know, short to medium range seems to be kind of there. The sideline stuff seems to be there a lot. Like, it seems like one or two catches to Ronnie Bell up the sideline is almost guaranteed. But yeah, you kind of disappointed to see him miss that. Um, you know, kind of busted things wide open. And I really wanted to see them open up the passing game this game. They tried to, and it looked like they were kind of forcing things a little bit. They weren't uh, setting plays up. You know, they weren't trying to soften the de- defense up before they went. I mean, I think the first play they immediately went to the left side. Maybe it was Cornelius Johnson. I don't really remember specifically who it was, but they went deep right on the first play, I think, and just wasn't there. And um, but, you know, you take what you can get, you know. Um, also, you know, Jesse Minner, yeah, and, all, and a lot of the our rival fan bases were, you know, dogging him for being from Vanderbilt. But guess what? This Vanderbilt dude is just a, a solid genius. I don't know what he's doing right, but coming out of the second half, it is literally just, just I mean, just a complete shutdown. Um, <clears throat> Tale of two halves has been this mantra for this Michigan team. You would like to see the – like a game like this against Rutgers, I know it's on the road at night, but you want to see the whole complete package get put together here. And, you know, it's still coming out. Well, I would say that it's not coming out slow. It's just uh, the, the teams are playing and are just hanging in there. We're not putting the, 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 the um, you know, a death blow early, I guess you'd say maybe. Um, But obviously the pump block we talked about a second ago was kind of weird. The defense forced three interceptions, a couple pick sixes and held them to 14 yards rushing. And mind you, all this was done with like eight players out this week. Ryan Hayes, Roman Wilson, uh, Jalen Harrell. Uh, a lot of guys were missing. Key starters were missing. And uh, started a new left tackle this week. So with it, behind the eight ball in terms of depth, they went out there and uh, and did their thing. Um, I have a lot of questions, but I'm going to start with this one. Are you impressed with JJ? Um, what maybe, in- maybe, maybe, maybe I can alter the question if that's not the right way to ask it. Have we upgraded at quarterback from 2021 to 2022? In overall grand scheme of things, I think we've kind of leveled off. However, the throw, there's some throws that, that JJ can make that Kate can't do. And a lot of that is off the back foot maybe or scrambling and creating that extra second to get the ball off. Um, he does that better than Kate McNamara. However, essentially in the, uh, in the stat column, in the grand scheme of things, overall it's the same. It's just a little bit different. Kate McNamara um, – would would actually hit a deep throw, I think more than than what JJ's doing. To be quite honest with you. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I agree. JJ's is doing a little tweaking there with the legs that that K just can't do. So, yeah, we're we definitely are red nip and tuck here. Yeah, I just like um, mutual friend of ours, Cody. Uh, he had I think he had tweeted it the other day or post, you know shared it on Facebook or something, but basically said like. You know, JJ has failed to meet my expectations, you know, and I was like, yeah, you know, that's that's a fair critique because everyone wanted this dude to replace Cade. And it's like one thing we were trying to warn everybody last year, pump the brakes. What's your famous line? The most famous guy in Ann Arbor is the backup quarterback. Um, It just. I don't know. I, I'm not saying I'm disappointed because I I like that the future's on the field already, if that makes sense. Um, I do feel a little bad that we kind of ran Cade McNamara out of town. Um, you know, obviously he ends up getting hurt and now he's on the bench and he's probably not going to play another down at Michigan. But um, I just don't think we're – I thought we'd be light years better. 
And the run game, I think, is a lot better. But I don't know if that's a, that necessarily even includes JJ. So um, that was just kind of a question I had. Uh, next question is, and I was going to ask you this a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you remember me ask, saying this. I was like, I got a question, but I think I'm actually going to hold off for another okay. week or two. Yeah. And it's come to me. Um, has your stance on where this team's at, has your stance on us beating Ohio State changed at all? No, I'm actually growing a little bit more confident, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, just the way this team plays, I just think we match up really well. Um, I just, uh, I continue to wonder what this team's weakness is. You know, I, uh, I think a little bit of it's quarterback. I don't know if that's fair or not. I think that's probably one of the weaknesses of this team. And the back end, you would assume is a weakness, but it, it really hasn't been. Like I thought it would be all year, and I keep I kept saying like oh, I'll wait till we play a you know they just haven't really given up that there hasn't been a game where I'm like oh my gosh the secondary looked like absolute dog shit this week so I just the more and more I see this Michigan team respond to adversity and the way that they continue to play and the way they reflect that 2021 team I'm like man I just feel really good about this team and obviously I know it's Rutgers I'm not trying to flaunt Rutgers but the last two years. Two years ago, we took Rutgers. Rutgers took us to three overtimes. And last year, the big house, we struggled to beat them. I think it was 20 to 13. And this year, we're down at the half, and we just obliterate them. I just feel really good about where this team's heading, and I just didn't know if you were kind of feeling the same way. I know, obviously, we talk pretty highly of them, but as far as Ohio State goes. Well, yeah, and, you know, Ohio State obviously <coughs> is, um, is is rolling without Jackson Smith and Jigba, but you can't take away that they still don't have a, a just phenomenal talent at, at the other wide wide receiver spots, anyways, but uh, you know, Ohio State, they're human. They're not. They're not. Uh, they're, they're not gods, right? They can't be beaten. And yeah, granted, there was across the Midwest and East Coast over this past weekend. Granted, there was horrific windstorms going on, right? And with an Ohio State team, uh, you know, flourishing off the pass. Um, and you have those elements that is going to bode well for other teams that are more physical up front and who can run the ball. And Northwestern hung around. Northwestern even hung around them in the Big Ten Championship a few years ago, too. Um, so with Michigan, how did that formula is built, I mean, Joel Klatt and others have already brought this up. Michigan has still got that same formula that beat them last year. Offensive line, physical up front. Now, when, they, when these two teams play each other in Columbus, um, Man, I'm going to be nervous regardless because of C.J. Stroud and these these weapons I just talked about. Um, they're going to get their stats. Last year we beat them. C.J. Stroud still for like almost eclipsed 400 yards passing, and, and it looked while you watched the game we whooped his ass. But they have NFL caliber talent at the at the at the skill positions. So going into this game in Columbus in a few weeks, and Michigan is still still look like they have the boss hogs up front to do it and. Playing keep away, running the ball down your throat. I, I just, I'm seeing that, that the, the makeup that uh, that's going to make this a game. So, yeah. Yeah, I just figured I'd uh, I'd rip those questions off for you while, I, while they were in my head. But um, back to Rutgers for a brief second. Uh, I'll start off with, with what I liked. But um, second half play has to be the, you know, on this list here. Um coming out, getting the three picks, a pick six, just really buckling down, holding them, just blanking them after they had a lead. They had a lead and all the momentum, the crowd on their side, and we just absolutely obliterated them in the second half, 38-0. So second half play, obviously, I liked. Second thing, I love every single way they're using Diamond Edwards right now. As the spell back, as the um, out of the backfield back, out of the, you know, the split out wide receiver back. Um doing literally everything love his usage right now i felt like that had to be a, a 1a and 1b with second half play would you like what i like was uh, is just the versatility of this offensive line we obviously have our core guys up front <clears throat> but we have sustained a lot of uh, or dealt with a lot of um uh injury woes uh this past weekend ryan hayes our left tackle was banged up was out of the game didn't travel jeff percy who comes in i think he's a junior uh 
plays his first game ever and did pretty well. Um, I know I guess it's at Rutgers, whatever, but, you know, first start at uh, at the LT, did pretty well. And um, per Jim Harbaugh, Ryan Hayes should be back for Nebraska this week. But uh, overall, man, this offensive line, they can plug and play a lot of people a little bit of everywhere. Um, Carson Barnhart, obviously, over there at right tackle right now to fill out for Trent A. Jones being injured. But, yeah, these guys these guys move all over the place. Even El Hadi, I can't even think of his first name. El Hadi, he comes in at guard every now and then. So, yeah, they, they definitely are uh, blessed this year with, um, with a, a nice uh, rotation, about at least seven or eight guys that can do it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Harbaugh said that, uh, coming into the season, he goes, we have six starting offensive linemen, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and one of them's not going to get to play a lot. Like he he knew that going in. He's like, I I have six starting caliber guys, mm-hmm. and then he felt really good about the depth, and that has shown in a multitude of games this year. And, and real um, quick, real quick, yeah. see, look at the. I know to, to get to this elite level, I would call Michigan offensive line elite. I granted the Georgia thing last year, and I'm only Georgia's defense was historically good. Uh, Michigan's offensive line. Look at where they're at now. Um, playing at such a high level compared to when Jim Harbaugh first got here in 2015, that offensive line was complete ass. You know, Kyle Kalis was like a five-star guard that came in here, went came to Ann Arbor instead of Ohio State, and Brady Hoke and company just ruined his career. And look where they're at now. They, they went from somewhere where Devion Smith had to break nine tackles before he got to the line of scrimmage to now, you know, Blake Corum and, and Donovan Edwards are just ripping, ripping shreds. But go ahead. All the credit to Sharon Moore, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, he took over this offensive line last year, just last year, because it was uh, Ed Warner, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, he was recruiting guys at Ohio State at a very high level, comes over to Michigan, and really it was a drop off. We didn't have that same production out of our offensive line. Yeah, there were some guys, Cesar Louise, a couple other ones, you know, pop, you know, pop out, but not the production. Mm hmm. Sharon Moore has put together next level type stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, what'd you dislike from the game? Uh, well, I alluded to earlier, just not having a complete game. Uh, obviously, the missed field goals, all three phases were kind of iffy at just for a brief period. <clears throat> but I just wanted to uh, be more balanced uh, and with the air game. Um, you know, I'll take a win no matter the fashion it comes in. All one ugly, I don't care. Um, but uh, obviously, we want to see progression throughout the season. And as we're in November here, um, I want to say I'm hitting the panic button. I'm not saying I'm I'm super concerned, but uh, again, you're know, seeing JJ McCarthy still being off the, the mark here a little bit, uh, especially the guy with like Andrew Anthony, which is like his buddy. Um, you know, you, you hope that they they fine tune and polish that suit. Yes. So going right into it, that's my dislike is. You know, JJ threw the ball 27 times. He only completed 13. Mm. That's got to be better. Like, you're a five-star quarterback. This is your second year in this in this offense. Um, I, I need more than 13 to 27 against Rutgers. I'm, the the weather wasn't a problem. I don't know. I, this this is why I asked you about Kate earlier. I just don't feel like we're getting a return on investment here. Uh, you know, if you're, if you got 27 pass attempts, I need you to be at the 20 to 21 range completions. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're missing out on a third or a a quarter of your completions here. I mean, realistically, and we probably need to have an extra hundred yards in there. I just, and I don't know what the game plan is with hardball, but where's the aggressiveness in the downfield passing? Is it because we literally can't do it because there's no touch on the ball? Like, obviously, mm-hmm. you had Andrew Anthony, you blew that pass. But, um, yeah, I don't know. You Obviously, if you tack on that pass, that makes it 14 to 27 for add 60 yards or whatever to his total. But I don't know. I just get really frustrated because I don't think we're getting the passing efficiency. Mm-hmm. Or and, and, J.J., coming to this game, to be fair, I think he was leading the country in completion percentage. Mm-hmm. 13 is 27 that's not it and, you mm-hmm. know um yeah it's got to change uh as far as more of i'll start um more of the continued fight never allow yourself to ever be down and out never allow yourself to be beaten especially not when the, the game's not over 
Um, and I just absolutely love how much this team reminds you of 2021. I mean, this, this, this team's the same, you know, I've said it a couple of times, um, the way they do things, the way they just out hustle you, the way they come into your environment, turn it into their own and dominate you is just, it's next level stuff. I love to watch it. That's what mm-hmm. I want to see more of. Yep. <clears throat> My more of is uh, the coverage of our defensive backs. Now, when you get to Ohio State, Ohio State, they're going to get their their stats. They're just that good. But we're seeing a, a, a nice progression here from 2020 and from last year until now. Um, even Jermon Green, you know, he, you know, sometimes he'll give up the big play because he doesn't have his head turned around. But the coverage is great. Right. So uh, Will Johnson got his pick this weekend. Uh, they're just playing at a really good high level right now. And, um you know, they're not like super press man coverage, but they're going to blanket you if uh, the ball's up in the air. And, um, you know, I tested three interceptions and and two uh, pick fixes. So, yeah, uh, good stuff for them. Um, anything else on Rutgers? No, nope, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, last thing before we move on, uh, I did think it was interesting. So Rutgers has one tunnel. And after the game, Michigan and uh, Rutgers were able to walk into the tunnel. No issues. Went about their days. Yeah. I don't know. Coincidence? What? Throwing that out there. Throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, though, Nebraska, the Bussin' Bowl. So for those of you guys that don't know, uh, there's a podcast called Bussin' with the Boys. Um, it's co-hosted by both Taylor Lewan from Michigan and Will Compton from nebraska and they had jim harbaugh on the podcast this this past summer and they asked jim hey can can we make this the bus and bowl harbaugh <laughs> was all for it scott frost was all for it so i don't know what kind of like official i don't know how official this is but to my knowledge this is the bus and bowl now so i'm excited for it uh it's this saturday 3 30 abc michigan is favored by 29 and a half so kind of big um Nebraska, kind of a disappointing year. Three and six on the year, two and four in the Big Ten. And it has not been good. So they lost the first game of the year. They they blew a lead to Northwestern. That was that's Northwestern's only win this year, um, to my knowledge, correct? I'm not that, overstating yeah. it. That was that's that what was, I thought. That was week zero in Ireland. That was a hell of a game. Yes, that was their only win in Ireland. So they have not won a game in America. Um then they beat you. UND, whoever that is, North Dakota, maybe. Um, then they they lose to Gasso, 45-42. Not even sure who that is. Uh, that's when they fire Scott Frost. Oh, Georgia. Um, what is it, Georgia what? They lost to Georgia Southern, dude. Okay, Georgia Southern, that's who that is. So, And that's when they fired Scott Frost. So that very next week, they got Oklahoma. They're renewing an old rivalry there, and they get blown off the field 49-14. So at this point, if you're keeping track, they're 1-3, and three, okay? Then they beat Indiana 35-21. They beat Rutgers 14-13. And it has not looked good since. They've lost at Purdue 43-37. They lost against the ranked Illinois 26-9. And they lost to Minnesota last week, twenty to thirteen. It, it doesn't look good. They have they're at Michigan this week, and then they're home against Wisconsin. They're at Iowa. Three teams that are arguably all better than them. But back to Nebraska. Um, they do have their top safety, Miles Farmer, out with a DUI citation, so he's going to miss this game. Yeah. Um, not a lot to like here. I think Michigan just kind of takes care of business. This was a get right game for Michigan last year. If you remember correctly, we were kind of down and out. Uh, it took a, it took a late force fumble. If I'm not mistaken. I mean, that was your number one play of the yeah. season last year. If you remember, you picked that as your number one play of the season. Yeah. That and Dax still sealed the deal. I think with the interception. Yeah. Yeah. Th- I mean, this team is, uh, I mean, that, that Nebraska game sparked them. I looked for the, this one to not have that feel. I think this is a beatdown from the get um, as we win the inaugural Bustin' Bowl. Yeah, I think uh, I think this is a route, man. Um, this is like the first time I'm really calling a route, I think, this year. But, uh, you know, Nebraska's like 
damn near in the in the gutter on all their defensive ranks in terms of conference, in terms of national. You know, they're getting gashed in the air. They're getting gashed on the ground. Uh, I think speaking of Georgia Southern, I think the Georgia Southern quarterback threw for over 400 yards on them. Um, you know, I know that was earlier in the year, but uh, I mean, Casey Thompson, the transfer from uh, Kansas State, uh, I, he didn't play last week because he has a, he has nerve damage in his arm, so I'm not even sure he'll make the the start this week. Uh, and if that's the case, they're going to be going with their backup quarterback again, and uh, it, it just doesn't look good for him, man. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, I think Blake Corman is going to have another Heisman Trophy filled day, uh, probably 120, two tutties. Uh, and again, this is a game just like the Rutgers game. I hope that um, we get some confidence in our air in our air attack. That's all I'm hoping for, and <clears throat> hopefully, um, hopefully we see it. So, I just looked it up. <laughs> it's official. As far as Will and Taylor go, um, they literally had a 40-pound trophy made for the game. Oh, my God. It, it's a school bus. Obviously, if you're familiar with Bus with the Boys, the show is recorded inside of a bus. So it's a bus, and it's got the the, the horns on the front of the bus. And it's a 40-pound trophy. I mean, this thing's pretty pretty legit. They put a preview on their Twitter. Um, they said they're both going to be there. So I... It sounds like this is official. Whether or not it's going to be recognized on the uh, on the broadcast is will be a whole other thing. That'll be interesting. But I just I'm with you. I think this is a Blake Corum Heisman esque game. Um, Jim Harbaugh has now mentioned it t- at least two different times now that he is very well aware that Blake Corum has a chance to be in New York uh, in late December, and I think he's going to do his best to try and get him there. At this point, we're within we're we're, we're right there. Uh, we have a minimum of three more games regular season, and then you have the, the bowl game. There is a chance that Blake Corum could break the single season rushing record for Michigan. I and mean, it's definitely in sight with where he's been. Um, he's already over a thousand yards this year. Um, love to see, love to see us just kind of break out Blake Corum in this game and just let him run and run and run. Uh, obviously I'm, I'm all about, Test out the passing game, get that fine tuned before a big time matchup in in Columbus here in just a few weeks. Um, it's hard to even talk football this time of year without bringing up that game. And I don't want to look at it like ah, oh, I don't care about Rutgers, I don't care about Nebraska, but I mean, there's no other game that's more important. So I feel like we kind of have to almost bring it up at, from this point forward. Um, anything else on Nebraska? I think you you said you even had a question for me or two. I got, I got three of them for you. All right. Go ahead and uh, lay the heat. All right. So, first question. So, so we're on the, on the topic of the Cornhouse curse. Yes. Michigan, Nebraska, before uh, the whole Big Ten uh, absorption of, of them, uh, they played each other in the 2005 Alamo Bowl. Who was the Nebraska Cornhuskers head coach? The 2005 Alamo Bowl. Yes, Michigan lost. They tried to do the Cal Stanford uh, um, backwards lateral to get it in the air. They ran out of time. Um, yeah. And any Mike Hart, all that Who stuff. Who is like Nebraska's head football coach? He also coached in the NFL. He was also, I'll give you a hint, he coached the Raiders. Give me a rough time period as the of the Raiders coach. Post John Gruden, the first tenure. Was it Tom Cable? Hmm. Not Dennis Allen. Who is it? He's been, a, he's been an analyst on the, on some TV panels. Um. But yeah, he after John Gruden got fired the first time, he was a head coach and lost in the Super Bowl to uh, John Gruden's Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Who is that? Bill Callahan. <laughs> wow. Okay. Interesting. Yep. Okay. All right. All right second- hit me with another one. I got to redeem myself here. All right. Who was the Cornhuskers quarterback in that game who is now an NFL head coach? <sighs> 
He's a head coach. He's a head coach right now in the NFL. Before going to Nebraska, if it helps, he was also uh, at Wake Forest before he transferred to uh, Lincoln. So, younger guy. It's not Sean McVay, is it? He's in the AFC. It's not Mike McDonald. Nope. I had no idea there was any NFL. Oh, is it, uh, is it Zach Taylor? Yep. Okay. Okay. Right. There we right. go. All right. So last one. All right. So and that was 2005, huh? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is all. This is all Nebraska. Th- Alamo Bowl themed. All right. So last one. There were six turnovers in this game. Two of them be- uh, were Zach Taylor interceptions. Which U of M player recorded both of them? 2005. So this is the Alamo Bowl still. Zach Taylor threw two picks. Who was the U of M player that turned them over? Give me the position. Is it a corner? <sighs> Marlon Jackson? Number, his jersey number was in the 20s. Leon Hall? My man. Okay, Leon Hall. Let's go. Let's go. See, I, I definitely knew he was a 2006-2007 kid. I guess I didn't realize he was 05, too. But Leon Hall makes sense. There we go. Hell Love yeah. me some Leon Hall. Hell yeah. Um, are you ready for the mailbag? Let's do it. Mailbag, mailbag, mailbag. Sorry, I am pulling it up as we speak. Here we go. Question number one. This one comes in from Jamie Lado. It's a Michigan question. If Jermon Green is healthy, pick your three corners to start for Michigan. Obviously, you got Jermon Green, Will Johnson, DJ Turner, and Mike Sander still. He says, in his opinion, he'd put DJ Turner on the bench. Jamie, <laughs> this is blasphemy. <laughs> DJ Turner is my guy. Um, truthfully, as it stands right now, I love that this is even a conversation. First off, yeah, I love right. this is even a conversation. Right. Um, Sander still is a captain. And what he's able to do as far as just athletically, he needs to be on the field. Will Johnson. He's still young. I understand he has all the talent in the world, and that's great. But right now, Jermon Green, DJ Turner, and Sanders still are better for what we're trying to do. But obviously, you're still going to see Will Johnson. Like, all four of these guys are playing. So it's not like – but I'm sorry, Jamie. DJ Turner is is him. He is that guy. What's your opinions here? Yeah, same. I like I like Green, Sanders, and Turner. I like Turner. <clears throat> you know, got that leadership, they got the experience, and then Sanders still, he's just he's all over the field. I mean, this year he's he's in the backfield, he's making tackles in the flats, he's you know, co- good coverage, he, he's all over the place. So, um, I like me, I like me, Asian Zero. Yeah, I uh, how many picks does DJ Turner have this year? Do you know roughly? I do not. I feel like he's the only one that really takes the ball away. I don't think Jermaine Green has one. I know Will Johnson just got his first. Sanders still doesn't have one. So, okay, so DJ Turner only has one. He had two last season. I don't know. I just feel like he's the he's the ball hawk of the group. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but still, give me DJ Turner. Um, Brad writes in, with Bama, Clemson, and either Michigan or Ohio State missing the playoffs. So he's obviously he thinks that Michigan or Ohio State, the loser, will miss it. Does it incentivize the committee to expand it to 12 teams? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Does expedite. it incentivize the committee to expedite the 12-team playoffs? Is he speaking this year in general? 
Um, at this point, I think they're kind of contracted into when they can do it. I think that's the biggest problem. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> honestly, this would have been a great year for it. There's a ton of undefeated. There's a ton of one losses. And there's some of the teams with two losses. Bama, mm -hmm. really good team. They just have two losses. Um, both of their losses came on the road in hostile environments at night. And it took the game of that team's life. So it's that just goes to show you how good Bama is. Uh, I, I don't – ultimately, my answer is I think the committee, if they could, they would change it today. Unfortunately, that's not what's going to happen. Um, let's see here. Kyle Miller writes, and I'll let you take this one. Illinois was the surprise in the Big Ten. Does the loss to Michigan State affect your opinion on them going forward for the West title? Yes, uh, be, just solely on the fact. I mean, it was a huge game, right? Um, in Illinois, uh, they have – hold on a second. <clears throat> their, their remaining schedule, whatever, it, it's all must-wins, right? Purdue, Michigan, Northwestern. They're going to lose to Michigan, right? So Purdue and then at, at, uh, at Evanston. Even if they have to win those two games regardless, because if they don't, um, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Iowa, you can't count any of those guys out because they're all tied, I believe. They're all three and three, I think. So, yeah, that was a huge game. And so if they slip up one more time, that's going to be in question. So when they lose to Michigan, that might be – that might put the nail in the coffin. We don't know. A lot of this is going to have to come down to who beat who, tiebreakers, all that. It's going to be a jumbled mess. But uh, it definitely didn't help their cause. Yeah. Uh, Dalton Judy writes in, is Georgia the only team that Tennessee won't be able to beat? What's your opinions there? Um, judging on their schedule, the Vols should win the rest of their schedule. I think when they get into someone who's got an elite offense, uh, I think they're going to be trouble. If they play Ohio State, they're losing. If they play Michigan, they're losing. I just think that, um, you know, they're they, – <clears throat> they get into a, a really a dog fight with someone's defense. They're just gonna be screwed. I think that uh, I think they can beat a lot of good teams. I just when it comes to Georgia and our two Big Ten dogs, I don't think they're gonna beat those. Yeah, I think Tennessee needs a lot of things to 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 go right in order to be a top tier team. I think they have to play at home. I think they have to have the better. They have to have the better offense I because think if you're it, run. What's that? I think Oregon could even test them. You know? No, I, I agree. If if they're not at home and they don't have the better offense, their defense can't contain – their defense can't hold its own. Bama's down. They don't have the wide receiver talent they've had in years past. You know, them in Ohio State, they've recruited wide receivers better than anybody else in the country now for five years running, six years running, even longer probably. This year, Ohio Bama doesn't have that where Ohio State still does. I think Ohio State would give Tennessee more than a run for their money on a neutral field. I think Tennessee would have a tough time. You've seen what Georgia was because they just defensively, they just smothered them. Uh, Oregon, like you said, would give them a tough time. I think you at USC would give them a tough time in a neutral field or a road game. Tennessee, unfortunately, they almost have to play at home, and they definitely have to have the better offense. Their, their quarterback's just fine. Their top wide receiver is just fine. Uh, the team in general is all right. Defensively, though, w if they can't outscore you, they're they're that's obviously a massive issue. Um, Brad writes in again. Two lost Bama. Have we seen Bryce Young play his last game for Bama? Three million in NIL and NIL money. If he goes top five, he gets ten. Fold that up to thirty. What would you do in his shoes? I'm not really sure what he's saying. If he goes ten, he gets. If he goes five, he gets ten. Tenfold, like he 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 doubles money getting drafted in the NFL. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see, I see, I see. I think so. I, I now that you say that, yes, that's what he's talking about. Um, so basically, he's saying he's already getting three million in NIL, but if he goes to the NFL, he's about to get the bank. What would you do? Would you stay and just try to make something out of Alabama or would you go to the draft? Because to be honest, I, I would have to imagine his draft stock is kind of falling. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. If see, I don't really, I don't really pay attention to his personality. I don't know what kind of like, 
his, you know, char- I don't know, all his charisma, all that stuff. <clears throat> um, I'd say that if, if, if Alabama falls short of their goals this year, if they don't get to the playoff, they don't win the natty, all that stuff, uh, maybe in the SEC championship game, I think maybe, maybe it, 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 he gives, it gives them incentive or motive to come back. Um, but, uh, if he, if his draft stock, according to experts and his agents, whatever, they tell him that he's still going to be, you know, one of the first two off the board quarterback position wise, I think he goes, um, if I'm a Bama fan, I don't think he's coming. Maybe, I, uh, or, um, if I'm a Bama fan, I, th- I'd want him to come back 100%, but I just think that he's probably 60, 40 draft. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd even go 70, 30. It's just in, in today's day and age, if you can get to the draft and you're a first round pick, I don't even think it matters if you're a top five, top 10 pick anymore. I think quarterbacks are okay if they fall in the first round, as long as they get that fifth year uh, guaranteed option. I think that's what they want. Um, anything else on mailbag before we hit to the, the rankings? I, I'm all good, bud. College oh. football rankings. Go ahead. Sorry, the rankings came out since we've been live. I know. Yeah. Okay. I didn't yep. know that. Sorry. 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 Yep. So the college football rankings came out. Um, I got them right here. So it's Georgia one, Ohio State two, Michigan three, TCU four. So that's your top four. First team out is Tennessee. Found that very intriguing that Tennessee is the first team out. First off, they dropped several spots. Four. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. There was definitely a case for them to be in the top four, I thought. But problem is, is TCU. I think they're letting these teams control their own destinies. Ohio State, Michigan, one of these teams will have a loss because they're going to play here in about two weeks. I mean, nothing else to really say. I mean, I, I think they finally got it right. I think this is how it should look. Um. I guess the one like caveat is so if Tennessee wins out, are they in? If they went out, um, they I gotta was, be. Yeah, they gotta be. The one team that <laughs> I think that just lost their shot is Clemson. Oh, yeah. I think, I think Clemson is, uh, is done. So drop six spots, losing to Notre Dame and, um, Louisville, Miami, and South Carolina, those wins are not going to get you back into the top four. So Clemson, uh, Notre Dame spoiled their year. Yeah, and and to be honest, Clemson went on the road and lost to an unranked team. Tennessee went on the road and lost to the number three team in the country. Big difference. Yeah. So Tennessee, I think, is is just fine where they're at. I, uh, I was wondering if Oregon would get a little bit more love. Uh, I think they are they at six. Is that yeah. you see the yeah they're at six. Yeah, and I, I guess that's a fine spot for them. Um, still a few big games on their schedule. They play Colorado. This, no, they don't. USC does. Oregon doesn't have much of an opponent. I don't remember who it was, but it's not. Not everybody crazy. They're going to win this week too. So um, interesting how this shapes up. Couple more weeks. Well, but. Uh, now that we're talking about Oregon, so they <clears throat> Oregon's got Washington, Utah, and then at Oregon State. So out of these uh, upper tier teams here, Oregon's probably got some of the tougher tests because right now LSU they ain't playing dog shit the rest of the year. So LSU, Oregon, they're gonna be nip. LSU tough. has two losses, right? But LSU's seven right now, and if they if they go on if they keep winning, really where where is USC? USC is at eight. I'm sorry, but USC is better than LSU. That is right. insane to me. Right. LSU jumped three spots, and, and USC only jumped one. All I'm saying is if Oregon and LSU keep winning, I know LSU doesn't, like I said, they don't have dick for a schedule, but, man, they're going to make these the, the top six, man, are going to be are really close. Well, the four, five, and six are going to be really close. If, yeah. old, if old Miss beats Alabama this weekend. Yeah. We have we have to we have to stop loving on everybody for beating Alabama. It can't, 
not everybody can do it. It's only cool in one or two people. You, not everybody can do it. And it's still cool. Sorry. Yeah. Like yep. then we have to lose some respect for LSU. I just thought SC deserved to be a little higher. They played really good ball. They've had one upset loss this year. Um, to UCLA, who I believe only had one loss. No, it's not to UCLA. Who beat USC? Utah. Utah beat them. So yeah. uh, I don't know. I, I'm, and I, I believe that was a road game too. So USC lost at Utah. In their only loss. Yeah, that's tough. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I would have them above LSU, but I guess it is what it is. Um, no room for error, man. No room for error. No, no. And I guess we'll save this question for next week because it'll come up. But um, I'll ask it now. and The answer might change. Does the loser of Ohio State and Michigan, are they out? Man, that is so hard. That is so hard to say, man. But <laughs> if if uh, if TCU stays undefeated and um, and if ten ten, I don't know, man. If if TCU is, stays undefeated and you get one more conference champion in there, like Oregon, at the end, man, it's gonna be really hard for the committee to uh, deny a, a conference winner like that. Man, that is gonna be super close again. It's just now we we went from having some wiggle room to now um, it's it's uh, zip it's zip tight, man. Yeah, I almost feel like the loser of Ohio State, Michigan, needs to be rooting for every single loss at this point. They need TCU to lose to Texas this weekend. They need Tennessee to lose to anybody, literally anybody. Um. You need Oregon, UCLA, and USC to kind of take each other out, give each other another loss or whatever. Um, I truly don't think you can put a two-loss LSU team over Ohio State or Michigan. That would that I'm sorry, that would not go over well. Right. Um, but yeah, lots to be determined. We'll talk about it more next week too. A um, couple of games before we get out of here. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Um. The AP poll is what these rankings are based off of, but I won't even give the rankings because I'm not sure how set they are. But every one of these teams is supposedly ranked. Bama at Old Miss. Who you got? Uh, Bama's favored <coughs> by 12. Old runner is in the stratosphere. Let me let me take Lane Kiffin's uh, little weasel ass. I'll take uh, I'll take the Rebels here. I actually like Old Miss in this spot. I'm sorry. I would like the Old Miss in this game if it wasn't in this spot. Alabama off a loss doesn't bode well. I'll take Bama on the road, even though they haven't been great on the road this year. I'm st- not off a loss. I can't do it. I'm taking Bama. Uh, kind of two weird teams, but UCF in at they're at Tulane. Tulane, actually, people forget this. Tulane upset Kansas State earlier this year. And now it doesn't look like an upset. <laughs> so um, give me Tulane at home. They keep rolling. They got a good squad. Same here. Green wave, baby. Uh, TCU at Texas. I predicted a couple weeks ago that I thought Texas would win this game. Now I'm not so sure. What I've seen from TCU is kind of next level stuff, but at the same time, give me the upset. Give me Texas. Man, I've been I've been hot and cold with the Longhorns all season. I like I said these last these last uh, four games have three ranked teams. I thought they were going to lose last week. They win. Um, you know what? Give me the Longhorns here. Just so we have more chaos and TCU can get knocked out, and we're gonna have to have uh, uh, a new a new spot team or a new team here in spot four. Uh, I believe it's North Carolina at Wake Forest. This is our last ranked. Yeah, I don't yeah. see Wake Forest ranked though. Wake Forest isn't ranked. Wake Forest is not ranked. However, there is a game that we passed that 
uh, it, the Oregon Washington game. They're saying Washington's ranked. Okay, so now this is okay. So this has swapped. Wake Forest was ranked. Washington yeah. wasn't. Now they are. So base, base, it must have been, came after the college football playoff rankings. Yeah. So now we're getting a ranked Washington at Oregon. Um, Washington started the year great. Yeah, those are our boys. Yeah, but Oregon, one loss, and it's only to Georgia. They're two score. They're two score favorites. Who you got in this one? Well, man, I fell in love with the Washington Huskies because Penix Jr. is a former Big Ten quarterback, and they beat Michigan State. Who I hate. Um, but Oregon, man, they're on a roll. Bo Nix has has turned into a, a good season here in the back nine. Uh, quack, quack, I'll take the Ducks. Yeah, I think the Ducks are just too much in this spot. The over-under uh, 72 and a half. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> well, 30. that's not even the worst one. The Wake Forest North Carolina game, that's 77 and a half. Like, what the hell is Jeez. going on? Just points. So yeah. many points. Um, Yeah, I'll tell you what. TCU loses this weekend and Tennessee doesn't. Oregon wins. Dude, that is ooh, that is gonna be some Yeah. Ooh boy. <clears throat> Does Tennessee even Tennessee plays Missouri? Missouri did give Georgia a run for their money earlier this year, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. I think Tennessee rules. All right. Anything else? I'm all set, man. You only Yawn four times at the end of this, so uh, let's so we're, gosh, we're making I, progress. yeah, I've just <laughs> been yawning like crazy lately. First off, I'm getting up earlier, I've been busier, yeah. I am just a yawning machine. But uh, bus and bowl Saturday, 3 30, Michigan moves to 10 and 0. I'm <laughs> excited. We'll be back next week to talk some more Michigan football. Anything else, sir? Um. Just saying, I know uh, college basketball officially kicked off. We will be doing some college. We plan on doing some college basketball this season. So I think once the college football starts to wind down after the uh, the festivities or whatever, postseason, all that stuff, we'll start doing. Yeah. I'd like to hopefully, you know, do some uh, college hoops this year. And uh, Michigan looks like, I, know, I guess it was Purdue, Fort Wayne, Mastodons, whatever the hell it was, but Michigan looked good. Yeah, you know, um, I would love to say that we're going to be doing this pod into early parts of January. So I'm hoping that uh, we're still talking football till then. We do like we do have plans to talk a little bit of basketball as the season uh, gets deeper into March, and we do have a we have a plan for a summer project. We'll 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 leave it there. We'll leave the details out. Um, we talked about it briefly. We both dig the idea. Um, we're going to, we're going to kind of wrinkle out the kinks and go from there, but we do have a plan for a Michigan summer project. Hopefully, uh, you guys will dig that as, as it comes closer. So, um, that being said, go blue. real talk, go blue.